Hello guys, this is Skylar from SkylarTube HD. So it's time for our Disney Pixar Luca Easter eggs and movie review. We are so excited to do this movie review and Easter eggs of Disney Pixar Luca. I enjoyed this movie a lot and make sure you check out our reactions video of it. So let's get on with our movie review and Easter eggs of Disney Pixar's Luca. Here we go. Pixar's Luca is a computer animated coming of age fam fantasy comedy drama movie released by Walt Disney Pictures and Picture An Pixar Animation Studios. The movie is directed by Enrico Casarosa, who also worked on the Pixar short film La Luna that was released in 2011, which was shown in front of Brave in 2012. The movie stars Jacob Tremblay from the 2017 family drama movie Wonder as Luca. Jack Dylan Grazer from the two It movies and 2019's Shazam as Alberto, Emma Berman as Julia, Saverio Ramondo as Erko, Maya Rudolph as Luca's mother, Margot Baracelli Bar as Gio's father, Massimo, Jim Gaffigan as Luca's father, um, Pierre Sohn from 2017's Ratatouille, its short film Your Friend the Rat, its video game which was on many game consoles like Nintendo, Xbox, and PlayStation Connect for Xbox 360's Connect Rush at Disney Pixar Adventure and Disney Infinity, which was a main game consoles like Nintendo, PlayStation, and PlayStation Xbox, 2019's George and AJ, 2011's Toy Story 2 and Small Fry, 2013's Monsters University, 2019's The Good Dinosaur, 2013's Toy Story of Terror, and the five Pixar shorts, Spark Shorts being Story Trust as C. Coro, Lorenzo Sir Cressley as Guido, Marina Masseroni as Miss Marskin Gallery, and, and Sandy Martin as Lucas' grandmother. The movie is set on the Italian Riviera between the 1950s and 1960s. The movie centers on Luca, a sea monster boy with the ability to assume human form while on land, who explores the town of Puerto Rosso with his new best friend Alberto, experiencing a life changing summer. The movie had so many good and funny scenes in the movie. The one part I liked is that the cat from Julia, Julia and his father in the movie is very funny. Even the coolest part is when Luca and Alberto won the race near the end of the movie to stop Air Cole. Uh, well, I got pretty emotional at the end of the movie when Alberto, Luca's family, and Julia's father say goodbye to Luca and Julia when they headed off in the train in the end of the movie. And my favorite characters are Luca and Alberto because they are like best friends. Pixar's Luca was really good. The movie was originally set to hit theaters, but it was canceled and released on the streaming service Disney Plus for free, like what they did with Pixar's Soul in December of 2020. There was also a post credit scene where Ugo, voiced by Sacha Baron Cohen, talks to a fish about how great his, his life is in the depth of the ocean, apparently unaware that he is not talking to Luca. I kind of think his look in the movie is like the angler fish from 2003's Finding Nemo. I mean, Albert Brooks, who, plays Marwin, who played Marwin in Finding Nemo and Finding Dory and Ellen DeGeneres, was really good in the movie, especially Ellen herself, even from Ellen's Energy Adventure, formerly Universe of Energy, over at Epcot in Disney World with Bill Nye, which happened close in August 2017, along with the great movie ride as a way to add new stuff, like Toy Story Land, which opened on June 30th, 2018, Star Wars Galaxy's Edge, which opened on August 29th, 2019 at Disney World, and May 31st, 2019 at Disneyland. Star Wars Rise of the Resistance on December 5th, 2019 at Disney World and January 17th, 2020 at Disneyland and Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway on March 4th, 2020. That's probably nice and great for the world of Disney enthusiasts. Because the world is changing and the future is awesome ahead. With every ending, there could always be a new beginning as the world with people that enjoy Disney and the parks and a lot of stuff from movies could be really nice to enjoy something amazing in the future.
we've got some Easter eggs from Pixar's Luca. We know that Pixar's very first CG animated project was Luxo Jr., a two-man short written and directed by John Lasseter in 1986. Since then, Luxo Jr. has went to become the face of Pixar and mascot of Pixar. And a mascot of Pixar. In the movie, if you look closely, the Luxo ball can be seen on a rooftop when Luca is overtaking other racers during the Puerto Rosso Cup. Remember Abuelo Lete in 2017's Coco? Here's a boat that both Loga and Alberto spot while in the sea trying to sneak into Puerto Rosso. The boat's, the boat's name, Elena, is a subon nod to Abuelita, whose name was Elena. It is also the name of Miguel's grandmother in the 2017 Pixar movie Coco. Spot the poster to Disney's 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea in the Piazza. The movie opened in 1954, and a poster of the classic hangs above a Roman holiday poster. But when Luca participates in a swimming competition, he wears a Jules Verne-style diving suit to hide his sea monster identity, just like the suits worn in the 1954 classic. The 20,000 Lakes Under the Sea also used to be at Walt Disney World's Magic Kingdom from 1971 to 1994. Julia's bedroom is filled with Disney-themed references. There's a stuffed Donald Duck by her bed. There was also an original book of Lee Adventure D. Pinocchio by Carlo Cuoti, which the 1940 animated feature was based on. Of course, no Pixar film is complete without the famous A113 Easter egg, pronounced A1-13. A113 refers to the classroom number used by character animation students at California Institute of the Arts. It is a classroom number at California Institute of the Arts, where filmmakers like Tim Burton, director of 1983's The Nightmare Before Christmas, 2005's Corpse Spies, and 2012's Frank and Weenie, Doc John Rasser, director of 1995's Toy Story, 1998's A Bug's Life, 1999's Toy Story 2, and the two car movies from 2006 and 2011, and Brad Bird, director of 1999's The Iron Giant, the two Incredibles movies from 2004 and 2018, and 2017's Ratatouille, had studied character animation. In Luca, the number appears on the train ticket Alberto gives to Luca at the end of the movie. The train engine number is also an Easter egg, 94608, the zip code of Emeryville, California. Since there are no Toyota trucks in Puerto Rosso, Pixar had to get pretty creative this time around. Instead of a Pizza Planet truck, you'd find a Pizza Planet Piago Ape, a small Italian vehicle. It's parked on a winding street during the climatic bike chase and arranged toward the end of the film. Here's the hidden Mickey. The round clouds in one of Luca and Alberto's dream suite sequences sometimes line up to create hidden Mickeys. When it starts raining in Puerto Rosso, everyone brings out black umbrellas while Alberto's umbrella is blue, blue, most likely a reference to the blue umbrella in which is a short film that played in theaters before Monsters University and a Pixar Luca director cameo. And Rebecca Casaroca has two cameos in the film. He's the voice of a card player in Puerto Rosso who says, SCOPA! He's also the loud Mount Fishman who, also, who introduces Loco and Alberto to the phrase, What's wrong with Stu's studio? But we couldn't find a turning red Easter egg that teases a future Pixar movie. So that was the Easter eggs for Pixar's Luca. Pixar's Luca was a really good movie packed with lots of fun. The movie was praised by many people, especially that of Jack Tremblay and Jack Dorian Grazer. Plus, a Jack D Jacob Tremblay playing in the live action number made as founder, and Jack Dorian Grazer playing Ron Scott along by Toys and the Studios, like more different than the Blue Sky Studios movies from his now Story Studios, and Sham 2 coming out soon. It would be pretty nice to know many of the stuff. With the moment released out of all the Pixar movies and even the short films, this movie was a lot of fun. Even better than many uh, Dream Disney Animation Studios movies in the short films. Possibly way better than enjoying Cartoon Network shows like Amazing World, Gumball, Teen Titans Go, Uncle Grandpa, regular show, and Mau Mau, because Luca is much better. It was another movie to not hit the theaters with another canceled theatrical anime releases like Scoop, SpongeBob movies, Sponge on a Run, and even Sony Animation, and Mitchell's vs. Machines, and Wish Dragon, which are two released on Netflix, different than any other Sony Animation movie, with Vivo. And the last, Hotel Transylvania sequel movie being Hotel Transylvania 4 coming out that could be more different. Possibly could be better than Space Jam, A New Legacy compared to Tron or Ready Player One, or maybe different than 2016's adaptation of PlayStation's Ratchet and Clank game, Density as a Playroom, Vic Planet, Home, or Escape from Planet Earth. 
but better than any other animated movies, even the better Disney Animation Studios, which has better animated movies than Illumination, formerly Illumination Entertainment, and DreamWorks Animation. I mean, this movie is a little funny than, say, like a Batman movie is a more funny animated movie, and is more great alongside other good Pixar movies like Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, Up, Wally, Monsters Inc., Coco, Ratatouille, and the Toy Story franchise. It is the third to be released on that date, after Tarzan and Toy Story 3. Most people compared some of the mov movie to another movie that is Call Me By Your Name. It is Pixar's 13th film to have a June release, following Cars, Ratatouille, Wally, Toy Story 3, Cars 2, Brave, Monsters Inc., Inside Out, Finding Dory, Cars 3, Incredibles 2, and Toy Story 4. Also released on the same date, 11 years apart from Toy Story 3, with The Good Dinosaur being 17 years apart from Bugs Life, Coco being 22 years apart from Toy Story, and Toy Story 4 being 6 years apart from Monsters University. The movie also celebrates Pixar's 35th anniversary. It is the second Pixar movie not to feature John Rassenberg in the voice role after Soul, the movie before it. It is the seventh Pixar movie to have a post credit scene after Finding Evil, Cars, Brave, Monsters University, Finding Dory, and Cars 3. And most of the movie was made at home because the Pixar Animation Studios campus in Emeryville, California, where I hope to work at one day, was closed temporarily. And it is the only Pixar movie to not have an IMAX release due to the cancellation of its theatrical release, and it has Dolby Vision and Atmos in the movie as well. But the biggest part for IMAX, as a more bank for your buck and stuff like that, IMAX Fast and Furious 9 is showing a sneak peek preview of Jurassic World Domain and IMAX screens of Fast and Furious 9 coming to theaters in IMAX theaters June 10th, 2002. It's sure it will be good. The movie also had little ties in with the books, Disney Store, Walt Disney World in Florida, found in Magic Kingdom's and Poem Shot, World Disney Disney Springs, and online at shoppings.com, and even McDonald's, which has their Happy Meal toys. I wish if Pixar's look was great, there could be possible plans to make a new village as a themed land that is themed around Puerto Rosso, where the movie itself takes place. And the expansion could include a Vespa ride as an Italy Pavilion expansion over at Epcot's World Showcase. With the next movie, Turning Red, being the first time hit theaters in March 2002 after two years since Onward in 2020, being Pixar's return to cinemas after some and look of these on Disney Plus and by his right origin story writer coming June 2022. It would be nice to see its work happen again for the world. Pixar's Lookout was a really good movie. In fact, I wish I could travel to Italy. More likely cities there, like, cities there like Naples, Rome, Pisa, Positano, Sorrento, Capri, and even Porto Fino. As the remnants liked the movie at one time, being incorporated into the movie. Much different than the anime movie and when traveling several hours to go see the real thing. I mean, what would you rather get a good picture of? Maybe the food there would be great to enjoy. And, and even imagine seeing the Mediterranean Sea there from there would be so cool. Even though I cannot, couldn't go at that time. In fact, I enjoyed the Portofino Italy theme at the Los Portofino Bay Hotel at, back at Universal, Universal Orlando back in 2017. Even the Italy themed pavilion over in Epcot at Walt Disney World in Florida is likely themed too. It was fun to remember the good times. For the future, I hope they can make a Pixar Luca sequel that will be sim similar to the Parent Trap, and it could be about Luca and Julia, Julia, trying, to, Julia trying to get Massimo and his wife back together. In Renko, cast well can expect interest in doing the sequel. The cast members had all expressed interest in turning for the sequel while also presenting their own ideas of what it would be about. Many people also had joked about giving Uncle Ugo a spin off series. Sound cool, doesn't it? P Pixar's logo was really good, referencing Finding Nemo and Little Mermaid, and this one was a hit. In fact, it was so good, it's so good and more great than 2017's Coco, which is another good Pixar movie that is way better than another movie that centered on D.O.D. Los Muertos, which is 2014's The Book of Life, and Anthony goes out, which is really great at playing Miguel in the movie, especially Gail Garcia Bernal to play Hector, uh, and Rene Victor to play Abuela, Elena, and Annie Ophelia Maguera to play Mama Coco. Well, Hayao Miyazaki and Studio Ghibli's anime with its movies like 1992's Poco Rosso, 2001's Spirited Away, and 2004's Halloween's Moving Castle influenced the creation of Luca. Enrico Casaloca had also inspired movie from his, from his childhood on the Italian Riviera. Enrico from Cinco Terri area in Italy had inspired Pixar's Luca. The movie was really great, especially with the roles of Jacob Tremblay because he's from 2017's Wonder, which is really good, and Jack Dylan Grazer because he's from 2019's movie Shazam, which he starred alongside Asher Angel, and Jack Zachary Levy from 2010's Tango. I mean, the movie is great because I have best friends since I was a kid, especially in school, but I had fun memories of my friend, which, friends which will be remembered in my life. The movie was so awesome. Make sure you check it out. It's now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Overall, I give Pixar's Luca 
an 8 out of 10. It was an unforgettable summer fun movie to watch and enjoy together. Okay, guys, so that was our Easter eggs and movie review of Disney and Pixar's Luca. It was a really awesome movie. It was so awesome. I really enjoyed it. Make sure you check it out. It's now streaming on Disney+. Plus. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more fun videos. And we will see you guys next time. Bye!